Hello everyone. We're back with another video. So exciting news this time. Um, as you might have known if you've been looking at my Instagram and Twitter lately, I'm getting a new snake. <laughs> so uh, this snake is going to be what they call a yellowtail Karibo. Um, I will do a video later on uh, once I get him explaining about yellowtail Karibos, but just so you know, it's going to be a yellowtail Karibo. Um, he's in the Clubbird family, just like my corn snakes and my rat snake, but the only difference is this one is going to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> so um, I'm getting him as a baby. He's currently, like, as I speak right now, hatching out of his egg, so really tiny. Um, but when he is full grown, within probably around three-ish years from now, um, he will be anywhere between seven to nine feet long. So he's going to be pretty big boy. <laughs> um, so I just figured, why not make a video of me setting up his baby enclosure? Because a lot of people have been asking me and are curious of you know, what it all inquires to own a snake, and what do you all need, and how do you set it all up, Absolutely. and all of that fun stuff. So, why not? This is the perfect opportunity to do that. So, um, this video is kind of going to be in two stages. The first stage here is I'm just going to kind of explain everything that I've got. I've got all my stuff set up around me here. And then the second stage is just going to be putting everything into the tank. So, um, keep in mind, that everything that I show, well not everything, but most of the things that I show you now here are going to be swapped out uh, when he gets larger because he's not going to fit him. He's, he's going to outgrow them. So most of this is just temporary stuff. Um, same as this tank that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Um, it's temporary. It's going to be probably about for the first two years of his life. And then I'm going to be building him probably about a, about a six foot by four foot enclosure. So um, yeah. That being said, here we go. So I'm just going to break this down. First, I'm going to show you a little do-it-yourself project that I did. Um, snakes need hides. They, they like to be secure. They like to be enclosed, especially as babies. Um, so they need hides to go in so that they can do that. So here, I went to the Dollar Tree and bought a couple of Tupperware containers. And I bought some black paper that you use for packing parcels and stuff like that. And I just taped it on. I cut a little hole in here for the door. So this is going to be his hides. This lip here, as you're going to see in a little bit here, is going to be underneath the substrate so you won't be able to see it. And I've got two, one for the hot end and one for the cold end of his tank. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be his hides for now. Like I said, he's going to outgrow these, so I'm not going to go out and buy $30 hides just for him to outgrow them and me have to throw them away. So, um, I figured this is good enough for now. He can't see out. It's solid. He's going to feel secure in it. And, you know, when he outgrows it, I could just toss them. They were a dollar, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I've got two of those. Um... Snakes need heat. As you know, they're cold-blooded reptiles, um, so they need heat to digest. Now, Kribos don't need a lot of heat, so his hot side of his tank is only going to be at about 80 Fahrenheit. So, it, he doesn't need a lot, not like corn snakes that need quite a bit of heat, um, but he still needs heat. So, one side of his tank is going to be hotter than the other, and how I'm going to do that is I have a heat lamp. So this is the dome. It's got a cord here. It's just going to sit on top of the tank, on top of the lid. This in here is the heat emitter. So this here that I have is this. It's a ceramic infrared heat emitter. This is 100 watts. So um, this will be plenty. It actually is going to be too hot for him. Um, which is why I have this little gadget. So this little gadget allows me to control how much heat goes through. So you just plug your heat emitter into this end, plug that into the wall of course, and you can t set your temperature with the dial. So that there is what they call 
a Reptitemp Rheostat. And you can use this thing on anything. You can use it for heat lamps, you can use it for heat mats, heat rocks, heat whatever you have, you can use it for. So it's awesome. Um, I've also got a small tiny little water bowl for him. Again, a Dollar Tree purchase because he's gonna outgrow it. <laughs> um, we have decorations inside or mainly for him, things to climb on. So these I purchased off of Amazon. They're just bamboo sticks that suction cup to the side of the tank. They're spring loaded, so you can put them wherever you want. I've got four of them. I've got another two in a package over here, but for now I'm probably only going to use two of them because, well, you'll see that in a second, but yeah, so I've got those, and then I've got a bendy vine. So this you can pose whichever way you want. You can lay it on top of things, so we're going to be putting that in there for him to climb up on and around. Again, another Amazon purchase. <laughs> um, we've got his substrate. So I showed you this in um, the corn snake video, but this is called Aspen Snake Fetting. And this is what's going to be in the bottom of his tank. Um, I like this stuff. Uh, you can use a whole bunch of different stuff, but I like this um, for the fact that it's very easy to clean. Um, it absorbs any moisture um, and all that fun stuff. So we're going to give it a shot. Um, apparently, Kribos can be kind of messy. So, you know, we might rethink this at a later date, but we're going to give this a shot and see how it goes for now. And hopefully it'll work. But anyway, so we got that, um, and then the last things that I've got are, of course, two things that just came in the mail today, actually. That would be my parrot in the background. Two things that came in the mail today is the tank lid. So you'll see in a little bit here, I just have normal large fish tank um, that I'm using right now. So of course, he can climb up the top, so we need something to go on the top so he can't get out. So this is a reptile lid. It fits the length of my cage, and then we're going to be using these clips to keep it in place so he can't push the top up and get out. So that's, that's everything I've got. Um, oh, I should mention um, that I do also have what we call a moist hide. Um, I think I showed you that in the corn snake video, but I'm not sure. But essentially, it's just a container with a hole cut in the top, another Dollar Tree purchase, um, that you put moss in it. You can buy that at any pet store. It's just reptile moss. And you dampen the moss, and then you put the lid on top, and they can go in there when they're shedding. So the only time that these guys need any moisture is when they're going to shed. So when I see that he's going to shed, I'll just pop that into his cage. That'll give him the moisture that he needs. And then when he's done shedding, I just take it out and it's ready for the next time. But other than that, that's everything that's going to go in the cage. So let me get the tank and we'll set it up. Hi, just a side note that I forgot to mention when I was talking about all the equipment that I had. Um, the heat lamp right here that we have. You don't want to plug that in too soon because it just draws on power that you don't need to do. But once you know when you're getting your snake, you want to plug this in about 48 hours before you get the snake because that way you can test the temperature constantly um, and make sure that it's at the temperature that you want it to be at and it's holding there steady so it's not fluctuating up and down all the time. Um, you can usually do that within 48 hours. So if you plug this in 48 hours before you get your snake, plenty of time to get this all regulated so that your snake is nice and comfy when he gets home. Okay, I'm back. I'm all set up. So this is my tank. I know you can't see it all in the video, but I wanted to get the side that I'm working on. So I've got cardboard already set up in the center here because he doesn't need all this space as a baby. It'll be too much for him and he won't feel secure. So he'll just hide all the time is what they do. So 
So I put cardboard in halfway down. So we're just going to be using this section of the tank to begin with. And then as he grows bigger and gets a little bit more explorative, we'll give him more and more and more of this until he's in the full thing. And then once he's about two years old, this <laughs> will be, oh, my parrot in the background, this will be done and we'll be building him a new enclosure. But for now, this is going to be his, his tank. So, um, we're going to set this up. So first off, we need the substrate. So this is all just going to go in the bottom. Now with this stuff, you want enough in here that he's going to be able to bury himself underneath it and be completely hidden. Because that's what snakes do. They bury underneath. So we're just going to put some stuff in here open up the new bag So I like to have enough in here that when I put my hand in it, it comes up to at least to cover my fingers. And that's pretty much good for the size of snake of like a corn snake. Um, after this guy gets fully grown, I doubt he's going to bury. Um, just because he's going to be so big, so he's probably going to use the hides more than anything else. But for now... He can bury in that. Okay, so we've got substrate in. My cat is right in the way of the video, so let me get her out of there. The joys of having multiple animals. Go, Piper. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put his hides in. So I'm going to put one over on this side because this is going to be his hot side. So right above here is where his heat lamp is going to go. <laughs> And then over on this side is his cold side, so we're going to have one over here as well. So he can choose which one he wants to go into. Okay, now yeah. the water dish, I'm just going to put right in the middle. And now the only other things that he needs is something to climb on. So what we're going to do is I think I'm going to put one bamboo across the top we're gonna spring load that action Come on. we're gonna stick that on there so he can climb up and then this one we're just gonna put kind of on top of it and I'm gonna section it to the glass down here that and then you can climb up here and onto here and then with my vines I'm just gonna lay them in here actually kind of kitty corner bury that bottom part underneath the substrate to help hold it A bit. Now these vines are meant to move so don't be afraid of just laying them in here. When he climbs up it's gonna push down like this but it can only push down so far as you can see and then he can climb up here and around. So these are just meant to sit in here loose and for them to just kind of have fun with. Nothing is is really dangerous for them in here because it, if they do fall off, they're going to be falling into the substrate, which is soft. So they're not going to hurt themselves. Snakes fall from heights out in the wild all the time from way higher than this. And they don't hurt themselves. So you don't have to worry about that. This is just something fun for him to explore 
and to just, you know, figure out what he wants to do. So that's it. That's how I'm going to set it up for now. Um, like I said, later when he gets bigger, this cardboard is going to be moved back. So as it moves back, he'll get more and more space. And I can add in a couple more of these bamboo things that I have and maybe um, like in his full grown hide after he's done with this tank, that one's going to be like really pretty. He's going to have backgrounds, he's going to have good water bowls, he's going to have good hides, he's going to have maybe like a driftwood log in there. Um, that one I'll deck out really nice, but for now, this is all temporary. So I'm not going to go to big lengths to, you know, make this really extremely pretty and then have to throw it all out. So that's his baby hide. So we are going to stick with that and we're going to see how he likes it when he gets here. Put the lid back on. And I should mention these clips that I showed you before these ones here, they come in different sizes. So you can get them for smaller tanks, you can get them for bigger tanks. So you have to watch which ones you get just to make sure that you get the right ones. This, these two here are for 30 gallon tanks or more. This is classified as a 50 gallon tank. So these work. So all you do is you take the one edge and you clip it into the top of your tank right here on the end and you push down and you heard that click it locked into place uh -oh. so you do that on both ends and then when they're in this cannot lift it's stuck tight so he cannot get out of that and then the heat lamp will just sit here on top right here and heat the one side of his tank and then the other tank, other side will stay cooler. So that's all I've got for you. That is setting up his tank. Now we just have to wait for the baby. Um, please keep an eye out on Instagram and Twitter because once the breeder sends me a photo of the baby that I'm going to be getting, I am going to be having a naming poll. So I've got two different names that I'm going to be choosing from. I'm not going to tell you them now because I don't want you to have time to think about it. I just want you to make a split second decision on which one you like the best. Um, so I will be doing another YouTube video to kind of explain how to pronounce those names because they're a little different. And um, then I'll be having a poll on my Instagram and my Twitter to see which name you like the best. And whichever one you like the best will be the new name. So keep an eye out for that. That should be coming within the next little while here. I'm expecting to be able to bring this baby home at either the end of this month, which is June, or the end of July, one of the two. It all depends on how fast he comes out of the egg, how fast he starts eating, and all that fun stuff. But that's my plan and my hope is to have him at the end of this month if not this month next so I'll be doing an unboxing video with him as well when I get him but for now this is all I got for you I hope you enjoyed watching me set up his new little home that I have to stare at for the next little while and wait for my snake to get here <laughs> and uh, if you like the video give it a like subscribe to my channels I'll leave my Instagram and Twitter link below for you in the description box and I will be back soon with another video. Thank you for tuning in.